LG Electronics has a large variety of televisions. If you want to go top of the line, you would get something like a OLED, which has the best black levels and the best colors. And they have many LED TVs as well called the QNED. But overall, the LG NanoCell brings in quality and performance without breaking the bank. But what if that was even too much for your budget? Well, in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the LG UQ 9000 PUD. Two weeks ago, I was looking at my favorite websites where I buy most of my televisions, and then I decided to go ahead and buy this LG. I then took everything out of the box, set it all up, and then started looking at the design of the television. Looking at the edges on this particular model, it looks gray and it goes from the top all the way down to the side. On the chain of the television, it has this little bump and that's an IR sensor so you can point your remote control directly to the television. I found this TV to be somewhat stable even though it only has one screw to hold on the feet. And the construction on the UQ9000 appeared to be really plasticky so don't expect any type of metal on this television that I can notice so far. The UQ9000 is a little bit thicker and it's mainly because it has direct backlights. And just in case you don't know what that is, it means that the series of backlights go all across the back panel so it can light up the TV somewhat evenly, but when we get to the test, we'll take a look at that. But overall, the back panel is smooth and it has a notch at the top of it, and it has a independent plug so you can change the cable if you need to. Buying these TVs today are very confusing because they make two different type of panels. First of all, this is the 43 inch on this video, which has a IPS panel, which is known to give you very good viewing angles as well as better colors. But the downside of it is that you get ghosting around images, which a lot of people really don't like, especially watching movies in the dark. On the other hand, you have VA panels, which give you so much better contrast, so you don't get ghosting as much. But the downside of it is the viewing angles are terrible compared to this UQ9000 with the IPS panel. This UQ9000 is going to have plenty of inputs for most people's needs. In fact, there's three HDMI's and one of them is eARC, so you can run it over to a soundbar. Additional to that, there's two USB, so you can plug thumb drives in, as well as keyboards and different peripherals. And there's an ATSC 2.0 tuner that's not ready for the new next-gen 4K over-the-air content. But there is a fiber optic output. But it does have Bluetooth as well as an option if you use the LG ThinQ mobile application. You can actually use your smartphone as an additional output, put headphones on that, and that becomes a remote speaker. Pretty cool. And it does have Wi-Fi as well. The UQ9000 now has the A5 processor that's a step above the last year model UN7000 and 8000 and its upgraded processor is going to do two features. First of all, it's going to upscale your older 1080p content and the second thing is to take 5.1 audio sources and down mix it to two channels for the AI Pro sound settings. At first glance, the UQ9000 has a stunning picture. It's bright, it's detailed, it's colorful, and vivid. It's everything that you could possibly want in a television. And for most people, this TV will be fine. You'll be happy for years. But for other people who have critical eyes, let me show you guys some different black levels that you get on this particular TV. And I will say that it wasn't that impressive. But again, this is going to be on people who watch a lot of movies and anything that has a lot of dark scenes. So here's a couple examples of the contrast on this UQ9000 and I will tell you being an IPS panel, it's never going to be as dark as a VA panel. However, for a lot of people, they prefer to have the better viewing angles and they do prefer to have the brighter colors which is going to be a bonus whenever you're watching HDR content. Now keep in mind, all my settings are in factory cinema mode and I will tell you that the motion test was not that good. And when I was testing out the blooming, the panel looked pretty good as far as that goes, but you can see the backlights glowing through the panel. Now, if you're a gamer and you've been looking for a new TV, but you just can't buy the 120 hertz version, I will tell you that LG incorporated some gaming settings so you can go through here and switch to the different modes to get a better experience. Additional to that, it has auto low latency, but it does not support the variable refresh rate. And I got a chance to do some gaming, so let me show you guys a quick example. You 
can expect this TV to have a really good experience on gaming. And I will tell you with this input lag tester, I was able to get a respectful 9.5 milliseconds, which is way beyond a lot of TVs on the market. But I want to take it a step farther. So I took an Xbox and I was able to get 4K at 60 frames per second, which is expected. I was able to drop down to 1440p and I got 60 frames per second. But when I went into the Xbox system and overrided the HDMI input, I was able to get 1080p at 120 hertz. But keep in mind, this is a 60 hertz panel. So what it's gonna do is make the graphics just a little bit smoother, even though the panel can't really truly support it. So what I've seen so far, all the LGs are now using this Magic Remote Control. It has hotkeys and the TV does support Google Voice Commands, Alexa, and additional to that, it supports Apple HomeKit. So you can hook it up to your Apple system and be able to control it with Siri. Addition to that, this remote control has a number pad on top of it, has your channels up and down, as well as a home button, and it has the screen pointer as well as some hotkeys on the bottom. The operating system on this TV is the WebOS 22. It has all the applications that you ever want. And addition to that, this TV has sports alerts and a lot of other features. Plus it does have a built-in web browser. So in conclusion, what do I think about this television? Well, I would say if it was for me personally, I would use this television in a bedroom or a secondary room. However, if it was my main television, I would spend a little bit more money and consider something like an OLED. Now, if you guys have any questions, leave that in the comments below. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace!